Well, hello there, YouTube friends. Uh, my name is Benjamin with Skyline FBA, and in today's video, I want to take you a little bit behind the scenes to um, to a product shoot. Um, this is a little bit over the shoulder, not necessarily a tutorial, because uh, you're going to see my entire um, my entire workflow, my entire process for coming up with the image that you see on the screen. Um, I don't know what that looks like quite yet, so we're going to build it together. Um, after the shoot, we're going to then go into Photoshop and then put the image together. So today what we have going on is this, uh, the can of Truly, which is uh, fastly becoming one of my favorites. And it's on some black plexi and I've put on the, each corner little bottle caps uh, so that it gives it a little bit of an indentation. Uh, on the surface. The reason for that is because we're going to try out some splash photography. One of the things that I'm kind of envisioning is, uh, I mean, when you have a, a can like this, it's you, you can't really get away from not doing splash photography these days. Um, so I want to keep the water sort of pooled in the area um, so it doesn't uh, just leak everywhere. Um, and yeah, so Let's get started. Uh, by the way, if you're looking at for one of the, the equipment that I'm using, I'll have all of the links to that in the description. Um, so you can follow along if you're getting into this or um, you know, just if you're curious, because I, I imagine if you're one of the 10 people that watch this over the next few months, um, uh, you might have that question, and if you are, please definitely give it a, a thumbs up and share it with a friend to sort of kickstart the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. Now, typically, you know, a straight on shot is basically like the default thing that's going on here, and I don't know if I want to do that uh, in this scenario. I think what I want is I th think I want to look up at the bottle. And that may or may not work out so well, so I kind of want to test that out. And bring this closer. You know, when you're looking up at an object, it tends to look a little more heroic. And I think that's what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see that? It just, it has that feeling of, of it being larger than life. So I'll get my line straight. Tighten that down. Rotate this over here. Now, is that going to cause problems later? I do want it in the center. Can I bring this down a little bit lower? Yeah, I can drop it down all the way. And I want it just at the edge there. This line here might give me a little bit of problem, so um, so I'm going to bring the white background further in and maybe tuck it underneath the um, the black plexi here. I think that's going to work for us. Um, I've learned the hard way that if you're doing splash photography, you want to use a cloth backdrop and not the paper one. Get it in autofocus. And my camera settings here are going to be f11. I think I might take it down to f8. And I like to get an autofocus and then change it over to manual just so it doesn't constantly change focus on me. And our, for our shutter speed, gonna have it as 1 over 125th because I don't want 
too much of that ambient light coming through here. I'm going to start off with just one uh, one light and a backdrop here. Uh, it's going to pretty much light everything up and um, uh, and make it like pure white. Yeah. Let's just take a test exposure and see what we got. Ooh, that is really bright. Uh, it's because my ISO is way high. Let's try 100. Okay. And it is okay that we're seeing, you know, some of this other stuff because we're going to knock all this stuff out in post. Um, there is a really bright light on that edge here. And, it, and you'll notice here on the can, there's a, if you zoom in closely, there is a lot of soft light around the edges and we're going to need to take care of that too, as well as light it from the front. And let's see, some of that ambient light is still getting through. We might have to deal with that at some point. The question is, is will it be faster to do it now and in camera or later on and in post? So let's see. Our next step is going to be maybe let's see if we can't uh, We can't create some hard edges around the, the can so that it's not soft. What happens is that light is just kind of um, wrapping around the can. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with it anyways, light kind of bounces around like a ping pong ball, if you can imagine that. So we can use that to our advantage with uh, bounce cards and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to create a um, basically a, a black line around that can because uh, we will eventually light the front. I have an edge, but it's not enough of an edge. And I still have a major highlight there. I'm gonna see about turning down the flash here in the back. Put it at half power. Ew, seen a lot of dust on the plexi too. Better. I think I want to turn the can as well. Get more of the truly in there. Ok, 
getting close. I have a nice hard edge. I like that. I don't really like that though. How that has that specular highlight just kind of that flare bursting through there. I think that just might be the where the flash is located at. So move this on this side, see if that helps. All right, and that's gone. Got a nice hard edge. Looking good. What's going on there? Maybe I need to flatten this a little bit. as I knock stuff over. I mean, it does look kind of cool having it all the way around so let's bring in another light and sort of bring it in from this side see if it kind of wraps around in a gradient gives it a little bit of a key light we're not sure yet this is kind of like a you know you take a shot test to see what it looks like and yeah that looks cool I like giving um, objects like this shape around the bottle and we do that with these kind of uh, with these dramatic lighting because you know with these you think about it it really is even though they're products and inanimate they they are you know this is portraiture um, it's just a portrait of an inanimate object so dramatic lighting plays really well here um, that looks pretty cool. I like that. What, what I might be concerned about later is when I do the splash and I have these black cards over here, I, I'm afraid that might actually cause a problem for me, but maybe we'll take an exposure that is specifically, uh, for the splash. Yeah. I think that's what I'll do. So that was wrapped around. This is kind of at a behind the can a little bit. I'm just going to inch this over to the side and point it. I'm not like directly um, aiming it at the can. I'm sort of aiming it at the edge of the can, uh, the can, just sort of to catch some of the edge light. Okay, and maybe what I'll do, remember how I said light bounces around like a ping pong ball, a ping pong ball, then um, I'm gonna put a white card here in hopes that, um, that the light comes this way, hits here and lights the other side of the can while maintaining a, a gradient in theory. Mm. Still got an edge. I like that. Nice sharp edge. I mean, it is lit. It's just not lit enough. We gotta go closer, maybe. Let's see what happens. Yeah, 
Yeah, technically that did work, but it has this hard line around there. I don't like that. So let me remove that and we'll see if we can't maybe come at this a little more from the front. Hmm. No. I don't like that highlight there. That's kind of cool though, the way that the, the can is looking. Eesh. Let's try from this angle. No, I like the, I like looking uh, left to right since that's kind of uh, in our culture and our Western part of the world, we le read from left to right. So it makes sense to have the light gradient going the opposite way. I'm going to have to move this a little bit. And this is the, this is pretty much the hard part here is we're trying to figure out um, our lighting setup before we get too deep into the woods here. I'm gonna add another little diffusion. This is more of a see-through kind of paper. See if we can't do something with, with it. Let's see, I like the gradient, I don't like the, This is this is the the hard part here is figuring out where the lights gonna set up. So maybe I'll fast forward through here until I, f I actually find a a good position for this. Otherwise, it, it can be a little tedious. But this is the process. Okay. The front of the can is lit the way I like it. We can use sort of the, that gradient. You know, from this side and blend it in with uh, the rest of the can. So I'm just gonna take another exposure here. That's too much. Turn it down one. Turn down one more. Boom. Okay. And then we'll blend We'll blend in the rest of the can. So we pretty much have our base exposure for the can. The next thing I wanna do now is to, um, to put condensation on the can. And how we do that, um, first I'll start with why we wanna do that. And that's because whenever you have um, it, the condensation on the can, it looks cold, it looks fresh, it looks crisp. It's a, uh, what's known as a refreshment trigger. Um, it brings out sort of the desire like, yeah, I wanna drink that. So we'll add some, um, 
some condensation to that and one of the ways that we do that is with um, uh, with vegetable glycerin or propylene glycol but today I'm going to use our new fancy steamer um, because that's another way so basically I'm going to turn that on can heat it up gonna pretty much get uh, get the can condensated in three parts. I want to start with a you know a small amount of condensation, a medium amount, and then a large amount. And then later on, I'm going to figure out which one um, I want to actually use. It's, it's just for having options. So how I'm going to capture the um, the water droplets on here is I'm probably going to have to shoot it from the very top so that the light rakes across the um, the droplets and sort of freezes the water and we'll have to do the same thing um, when we do our splash. You know, in fact, I think since we are happy with our base exposure. Um, I am going to add the water just to give us another back background. Hopefully you run towards the center. enough what does that look like that looks kind of cool I'm gonna get some canned air I had imagined this was going to go a different way. Basically, I'm creating ripples here, but it might not translate so well since I'm I'm looking up at the water. Yeah. It was a nice thought. Didn't really work out. If I was looking down at the bottle, then it would be more appropriate to do this. So let's start with some steam. That is just a tiny bit. Yes. And one of the reasons why we're doing this out in the garage is because of how messy this is going to get. I do want to turn up my light just a little bit. There we go. That has more lighting. You can clearly see the, uh, the condensation on the can. We still have sharp edges. Yep, 
that looks pretty cool. So we're gonna add some more condensation. I would like to keep this water in the center here. Water droplets are much bigger. I think I'm gonna go bigger on the top and let it run down the, the can. But that look, that's looking pretty good, I'm happy with that. One droplet, two droplet, three, four, most starting to go down. All right, it's too bad. Oh, if we can't capture the droplet. I, in fact, I might be able to just add some vegetable glycerin to the side of it. Hopefully it'll stick. Uh, maybe not, it's worth a try. Okay, now I think we're ready for our splash. This is the fun and the messy part. If you haven't noticed, we're already kind of messy, but it gets even better. Okay, so I cheated a little bit. I took lunch and now I'm back and ready to, uh, to do the splash part of this, um, uh, of this project. Um, and to do that, um, I need to detether from my computer uh, because this particular camera only has one micro USB port on it and unfortunately I need that to, to put on my wireless remote trigger. And I'm going to do this because there is a little bit of a um, uh, synchronization that needs to happen. I need to take the picture exactly when the water is splashing up. And um, in my experience, it's been kind of difficult to try to merge the layer with, um, uh, if I use the can itself to splash the water. So what I'm going to use here, and this is gonna make our job a little bit easier as we try to blend this together, is use something a little skinnier um, than the bottle or than the, than the can there and a little more transparent. So hopefully, uh, hopefully our blending job will be much easier. Uh, when we get it into post. So I'm just going to kind of swap this out. And now things are gonna get messy. And here goes nothing. That, hopefully that was a good one. That was pretty cool. Our water is nice and sharp and in focus for the most part anyway. But it's 
I think it may have been a little too much because the splash is like way out here. So I'm gonna try to go a little bit softer. And I'm not trying to get water everywhere, but that's just kind of what is gonna happen here. Uh, this is kind of cool, not really what I was looking for. And... Not what I'm looking for. I mean, you ha I had this huge splash just go way out there and that's not what I want, so... Maybe I'll just slightly drop it. <laughs> uh, it was a little either late or early on that one because I just got a little bit of a ripple. Ooh. That one straight into my face. <laughs> <laughs> that looks cool. I like it, but I don't think it's going to work. Man. Let's try not to get water everywhere. Okay. I like this one much better. kind of want it on the other side too. And the only way I have control of that is if, you know, when I splash down, if it goes a certain way, um, it's really difficult to do. That was mostly behind the camera. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I think I was lit on that one. Yep. There we go. So far, I think that one's my favorite. I really like that one. What I don't like is that the can is not Can is not in the reflection, but we're just gonna have to. Hopefully, we can. That's an easy fix. Fix it in post, so they say. I like that one the most. I think we're done here. I, so, at this point, um, at this point, we're gonna go into Photoshop and put everything together. <laughs> <laughs>